And so I have a little um, sketch here of the types. The first one was corresponding. These are congruent angles that are on top of the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal. Alternate exterior, they are on the outside of the parallel lines and alternating sides of the transversal. Alternating interior, on the inside of the parallel lines and alternating sides of the transversal. Consecutive interior, inside the parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal. The transversal is the line that cuts two or more lines, intersects two or more lines. That is your transversal, okay? So that whole first page is really just naming those. You're going to get a picture of it and you're going to tell me what you have, all right? The second page is actually calculating them. And so you need to know what you have so that you know how to calculate it. If you have something like number nine here, what type of angle do I have? Well, I have alternating exterior angles. So then I should know alternate exterior angles are congruent. And so I can just answer this without any adding or subtracting whatsoever. I can just say that this is 73 degrees. But if I look at the next one, number 11, these are consecutive interior. So I should know that these are supplementary, which means for this one, I am going to have to subtract from 180, all right? You're gonna have to subtract from 180. And so you have to know the difference. If you don't know the difference, you're going to get these wrong and they're very, very simple. And so you don't wanna get these messed up just because you don't remember whether they're supplementary or the same. Um, all of them are the same except for this type right here, okay? The next set of them do exactly the same thing, they just solve for X, okay? So if you look at the next set of questions on page three, they're identical to page two, except you're just solving for X. So again, same side, I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna set that equal to 180 and then I'm gonna solve for my X, okay? And so that's the same thing. And then the next one, these are corresponding. So I should know that these are congruent. So I'm gonna set these equal to each other. All right, set them equal to each other. And so if you know the first page and whether or not they're congruent or supplementary, you should be able to do the second two, the second and third page there. So the first thing we did was the distance formula. For the distance formula, you subtract your x's and square it. Add that to subtracting your y's squared and then take the square root of the whole thing, okay? In this particular case, it doesn't matter which one's x1, x2, y1, y2. It really doesn't matter because you're gonna subtract and square. And so it's gonna end up being positive no matter which way you subtract. That's not true of the slope, it does matter the order, but this one doesn't. As long as you subtract your x's and square it, subtract your y's and square it, then you are good. So you are literally gonna do it just what it says, subtract your x's. So I'm gonna say one minus a negative eight. Pay attention to these negatives because a lot of you just did not realize you were subtracting a negative and so then that changes your answer. You add to that your y's, seven minus a negative five. And then you're just gonna do order of operations here. So one minus a negative eight is gonna give me nine. So I have nine squared, which is 81. And then I have seven minus a negative five, that's 12. And so that's gonna be 12 squared, which is 144. Add that. 225, so that does have a perfect square, which is 15. Not the square of 15, just 15. So your answer here would be 15. For your test, just like your quiz, you, you're gonna be able to use a calculator, and if it's not a perfect root, I mean, 225 has a perfect root, but if it does not, you can just give me the decimal, one-tenth. So some of you didn't pay attention to the fact that I said round to the nearest tenth, so pay attention to your instructions. Round to the nearest tenth means put it into the calculator and round one decimal place. All right, for the next type, you have to figure out what your points are, okay? So you're gonna do this exactly the same, except I did not give you the points. So pay attention to your points. This is negative two, one. So this first point here is negative two, one, and that's what I'm gonna use for my X and my Y. The second point here is negative four, negative one. Negative four, negative one. And now I am gonna do exactly what I did up here. I have my xy, xy, I'm just gonna plug it in and solve. 
So you are really just taking the average of your X's and the average of your Y's. And that is your midpoint. Your midpoint should be exactly that, a point. So your answer is going to be an X, Y point here, okay? Some of you subtracted on this one on your quiz. Midpoint is adding, it is the average. You add up and divide by how many you have. So d distance formula is subtraction between your variables. This one is not, midpoint is addition. And many, many, many of you subtracted. And so if you see a little plus sign above your midpoint that you did, you subtracted instead of added. And that's what, what you did wrong here. So for this one, I'm gonna take my X's, I'm gonna add those. So I'm gonna say 10 plus negative 10 over two. And that is the X value of my midpoint. And then I'm going to say negative one plus negative five over two. And that is the Y value of my midpoint. And so this particular midpoint is gonna be zero over two, which is just zero negative six over two, which is negative three. So my answer is gonna be a point, an X, Y point here. I'm gonna set it up similar, but I have given you one of your endpoints. So I have an X, but I don't have my other X. But I do know what that average equals. All right, and I have one of my Y's, but I don't have the other Y, but I do know what that average equals, okay? And so I've just given you two different pieces of the same puzzle here, and you're just solving for a different piece. And so for these, you're gonna take your midpoint value, which is this one. So you're gonna multiply both sides by two. We're just solving here. Five plus X equals two. Subtract my five. The X value here is gonna be negative three. Same thing for my Y value. Multiply both sides by two. <coughs> 8 plus y equals 0. So my y value here is going to be negative 8. Still using the midpoint formula for that guy. So midpoint is add your x's and divide by 2, add your y's and divide by 2. The graph, ask for slope. They want the slope of that line. Or I can give you two points and ask for the slope that way. Either way, you can use your slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. With a graph, though, you can just walk it, all right? So with a graph, you don't even have to do your subtraction. You start at the first point, start here. And I have to walk down one to get to where this guy is gonna be. So down one, that's my numerator. My numerator tells me up or down, I went down one. And then my denominator, so I went down one to get right here. And I'm gonna go over one, two, three, four. So my denominator tells me left and right. Uh, if I go down, it's negative, up is positive. Right is positive, left is negative, okay? And so that is my slope. Negative one fourth is my slope. That's all you have to do if you've been given a graph. If you have not been given a graph, then you need to use your slope formula. Subtract your y's over subtract your x's. Now here, order matters. It doesn't actually matter what order you start in as long as you finish the way you started, all right? So if I say my y's are gonna be negative two minus negative 15, then in the denominator, I have to start with the one that paired up with the one I started with before. So if I started with negative two, I have to start with this five and subtract the 17, okay? You can do it the other way as long as you do it in the same order. So if I started with the negative 15, then on this side, I have to start with the 17, okay? So it doesn't matter what order you started in as long as you keep the same order. Subtract your Y's over subtract your X's. And either way, you're gonna get Negative 2 minus a negative 15, that's going to give you 13. 5 minus 17 is going to give you negative 12. Same thing up here, you would get negative 13 over positive 12. They both equal negative 13 twelfths, all right? One negative, your whole fraction is going to be negative. Two negatives, your whole fraction is going to be positive. Another thing that I saw in your quiz is you did not reduce, okay? If you can reduce, reduce. This particular guy cannot. But had this been four twelfths, I would have wanted you to reduce it. And if you don't, you'll miss points for that. So make sure if your fraction can reduce that you do go ahead and reduce it. 
Do not change it to an improper, I mean, do not change it to a mixed number. Leave it as an improper fraction, okay? Your slope needs to be a fraction, not a mixed number. Form. So this is standard form, AX plus BY equals C. Um, your A, B, and C are all integers, um, and you do not have to switch it over to slope intercept to graph. Because on your quiz, I said, give me the X and Y intercepts then graph, and some of you completely ignored your instructions, okay? So I need you to give me the x and y intercept and then graph. That's what I want you to do. And so for, and I've given you the shortcuts here. For y intercept, plug a zero in for x. For x intercept, plug a zero in for y. It's very simple. If I am solving for my x intercept, 2x plus, I'm gonna plug in a zero here. Three times zero equals six. So 2x equals 6, x equals 3, all right? So that means I'm going to go on my x-axis to the positive 3 and put a point. For my y-intercept, I'm going to take my x and make it a 0. And then I'm going to solve for my y. And so that means I'm going to go on my y-axis to a positive 2. And then to finish this out, I am just going to connect those dots. So you're going to take straight edge, hopefully, and you're going to connect those dots. That is your line for this particular function. So your slope intercept is the most common form here. Y equals mx plus b. Your m is your slope. Your y intercept is your b. Again, on these instructions for your quiz, I said, give me the x uh, find the slope and the y-intercept, and then sketch. So I actually wanted you to list out your x and y, er, um, slope rather, and your y-intercept. So I should have seen something that looked like this. Slope is negative one-half, y-intercept is negative three. All right, I actually wanted you to list those. Your slope is not the x. So some of you put like one-half x, and I crossed through it and said don't include the x. So the slope is just the number in front of the x. To graph these, you start on your y-intercept. So in this case, I'm going to start on the y-axis at negative 3. My slope is negative 1 half. That movement can either be negative 1 over positive 2 or positive 1 over negative 2. Either one will give me the same line. So remember, the top moves me up and down. So I go down 1 and over to the right 1, 2. And that's where I'm going to put my new point. Or if I need to do it the other way, I can say up one and left two, and I put a point there. It's going to be the same line. Once you have two points, that's all you need. You don't need all three. Once you have two, just connect your points there, and that is your line. You are using slope-intercept this whole time, all right? You're using slope-intercept this whole time. When, you, you, when, you, when I ask for slope-intercept, I want you to fill in the M and the B, all right? That's what you need to fill in. The problem here is that I only gave you the M for this one, right? I gave you slope, which is your M value. So I already have my M right here. I need my B. Well, I've given you an X and Y. So you can literally plug in your X and Y and solve for B. Some of you started and then you didn't solve for B. So I'm going to say Y equals M X plus b, and then I need to solve for that b. All right, so I'm gonna say negative two here. Then I'm gonna add my two over. So b here is gonna equal negative one. So now I have my slope, m, and my b. I am gonna rewrite this, y equals two x. If it's a negative, just say minus the one that's the answer there, y equals mx plus b. Numbers 55 through 58, ask for the same thing. Slope intercept form of this line. They did not give you the slope, they just gave you two points. So you're have to gonna go back to your slope formula, which you've already used, and calculate the slope first. So I'm going to say y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. So for this one, I have negative 3 minus a negative 1 gives me negative 3 plus 1. <laughs> over zero minus four, negative four, reduce that to positive one half. So now I have my slope. They actually gave you your y-intercept here, by the way. Anytime you see zero and a number, remember when your x is zero, that is your y-intercept. So if they give you this, you can actually jump straight to y equals one half x minus three. But let's say you did not get handed the y-intercept, all right, gift wrapped like that. You can use either point y equals m x plus b. So you can always solve for your b. You will get the same y-intercept no matter which one you use. But I would recommend if they hand it to you just to go ahead and solve the problem. Your answer is y equals 1 half x minus 3. So for this one, they use the words parallel and perpendicular, OK? If they say parallel, they have given you your M. They have given you your M. It is the guy that's right here in this line, okay? They've given it to you. So now you have an X, Y, and you have your M. You're gonna do exactly what you did on the problem before. You're gonna say Y equals M X plus B. And then you're gonna solve for what your B is. All right, so for this one, we're going to say 5 equals a positive 1 plus b, so b is going to equal 4. So I have my slope, I have my y-intercept, my answer is y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. Okay? Parallel, they just hand it to you. You do not care about this piece at all. The plus 5 is insignificant, okay? You don't use it at all. All you use from that line is the slope. If they say the words perpendicular, they have also given you the slope. You just have to convert it. If it is perpendicular, flip this upside down so one half becomes a two and change the sign. This is positive, it becomes negative. So your slope is the negative reciprocal of the perpendicular line. Just flip it upside down and change the sign. And then you're gonna do exactly what we did on the other problem. Y equals your new M, X plus B, and then you're gonna solve this guy. B is gonna equal negative three. And again, you have your M, you have your B, Y equals MX plus B.